Okay, Alexander, let's talk about uh, Twitter and uh, Texas. Twitter and Texas, and maybe at the end of the video, we'll talk a little bit about Twitter and Russia, because something interesting is going on there. At the end of the video, we'll, uh, we'll discuss that. But uh, we have the big story here, which is Twitter is now suing the Texas Attorney General in order to avoid an investigation into uh, Twitter censorship of, uh, of President Trump and of, of all conservatives, actually, and all types of, uh, of conservative uh, accounts. So Twitter is suing the Texas AG in order to prevent that Texas AG from digging into what Twitter has been up to during its deplatforming, its banning, and its censorship practices of, uh, of all of 2020. And basically, this runs, once again, uh, into the, the big question of Section 230 and are you a publisher and are you uh, a platform? Just very quickly, Alexander, I do want to say to the Biden administration's credit, they have appointed, which is an interesting pick, they have appointed uh, a guy named Tim Wu, a Columbia University professor, and uh, he is going to be the top advisor to um, to all the stuff on uh, on big tech. And he's been a, a very big advocate, very vocal advocate for the breakup of big tech. Let me here, here's one of his quotes, just to add some context. Quote: I think. Breakups or undoing of mergers are actually called for more than we have appreciated in the last few decades. This is what Wu said uh, about big tech companies. I mean, this guy this guy coined the word net neutrality, from what I understand. By the way, he also uh, published a book, authored a book called The Curse of Bigness, Antitrust in the New Gilded Age. And uh, <laughs> this is an interesting pick, but... Anyway, let's let's uh, let's focus on Twitter, Texas, and then focus on this White House pick because maybe it's uh, it's relevant in the big picture of things as to what might happen to big tech going forward. Maybe maybe the uh, the Democrats and the powers that be want to uh, curve the power of big tech now that they've gotten what they needed out of them. I don't know. What do you think? Uh Absolutely. I mean, this is all very, very interesting indeed. But can we just tur turn firstly to the court case? I have to say, I find this a very strange court case indeed. I mean, uh, alleging that the attorney general of a state is abusing his power in this way by launching an investigation of Twitter. Um, I, I wouldn't have thought that kind of court case would have very, very much mileage. At the end of the day, the attorney general of a state represents law enforcement in that particular state. And obviously he must not use his powers in an abusive way, but he has very wide discretion indeed in what he investigates. And he is surely entitled to see the documents and papers that uh, um, he is asking for. And as I understand it, what Twitter is saying in response to this and why they're resisting this leak, this investigation and trying to get the courts to block it is because they, they consider that this information is private and confidential. Well, of course, it could be in a general civil context, but in the context of this sort of investigation, I would have thought it is not. And also, and this I found really striking, they said that, you know, releasing this information interfered with its editorial decisions. Now, editor, editorial decisions are things that publishers make. If Twitter is a publisher, then, of course, it makes editorial decisions. But at that point, it can't argue, it seems to me, that it is an impartial platform. So it can't have it both ways. It can't you know, claim to be exercising editorial decisions and say that on that basis, it's entitled to withhold its documents and at the same time claim that it's not a publisher and doesn't make editorial decisions, but is merely a platform and therefore has all the legal protections that go with that. It is, as we would say in England, trying to have its cake and eat it as well. So I wonder how this will play out. And to my mind, the fact that Twitter has taken this unusual step instead of simply and straightforwardly cooperating with this investigation, as one might expect that it would, strongly suggests that Twitter is very nervous 
and wants to keep itself free of any inquiries and investigations of any kind and is concerned not to uh, disclose uh, documents, internal documents and internal uh, uh, material about its decision making processes because it feels that it might have to answer even more and very serious questions if these come up to public scrutiny. So it's a very interesting decision that Twitter has taken. I can't personally imagine it will succeed. But then again, there is so much that has happened in the American court system over the last five years, which I would not once never have believed possible. And of course, it does happen. So though I can't imagine that it would succeed. Perhaps, nonetheless, Twitter will, and it will be able to stop an investigation being carried out into what it's doing by the Attorney General of one of the foundational states of the American Union. Well, we shall see. So that is all very, very interesting. Now, about this appointment by the Biden administration, I think it's fair to say that the Democrats are not united by any means about big tech themselves. But I, I suspect, and you know, there's the Democrats are an uneasy coalition and various people are brought in in order to balance that coalition. And that may be one of the reasons why this decision to appoint this person has been made. It's also possible, by the way, we must never overlook this possibility that he was going to be a fierce critic of big tech before. But now that he's in the administration, suddenly all that criticism will disappear or he could be isolated. It could be a device to tell us all, well, you know, the Democrats, the administration is going to take this thing very seriously and we've appointed this person who is an enemy of big tech and that's a sign that we really do intend to clamp down upon it and it could be simply it's a simply a case of symbolism and tokenism because in reality this person will be marginalized and they won't do anything so those are possible possibilities but of course there is also the further possibility that there may be some people in the administration who are thinking what you are thinking, which is that um, big tech has done its job. It's perhaps overreached itself. It's very exposed now. And therefore, the time has come to start to uh, dismantle its structures as they exist at the moment and to try and set up something in its place, which, however, and let's be very clear about this, will suit us. So that may be what this is all about. Yeah, something that they can control uh, much, exactly. much more effectively. Exactly. Absolutely. That, that makes sense. Exactly. Um, exactly. Um, and, real and, quick. Justify, and justify, because, of course, having vast power, you know, a lot or, or you know, you know, monopolies, in effect, making these kind of decisions uh, it, it is unsettling and appears ugly. But if you have a, 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 a you know, a more diverse system, which is actually every bit as controlled as the present system is, that might be an easier thing to justify than what we have now. And that's not something we should overlook and discount. Yeah, I mean, that's that sounds well in line with what the uh, the globalists and the elites and, and these types of uh, characters would do. Now that they've gotten everything that they needed out of big tech, they could start to reconfigure it, dismantle it, reconfigure it, rejig the whole thing and uh, make it much more compliant to, to their needs. Because you never know, um, there's always that fear that uh, that Zuckerberg might day, one day might wake up and say, you know, I, I really don't like uh, Kamala or Sleepy Joe. You never know. So, you know, if I was them, it, it makes sense. You want to remove that uncertainty. But uh, going back to, to the Twitter lawsuit real quick, uh, two quotes from, uh, from the lawsuit, one from Twitter and uh, one from uh, Attorney General Paxton, quote, Twitter seeks to stop A.G. Paxton from unlawfully abusing his authority as the highest law enforcement officer of the state of Texas to intimidate, harass, and target Twitter in retaliation for Twitter's exercise of its First Amendment rights. This is what the company wrote in the court filing. Isn't that rich? To intimidate and harass Twitter. Isn't that rich? Wow. And this is from A.G. Paxton Alexander, and then you can comment, quote, First Amendment rights and transparency. 
must be maintained for a free online community to operate and thrive, Paxton said at the time. However, the seemingly coordinated deep platforming of the president of the United States and several leading voices not only chills free speech, it wholly silences those whose speech and political beliefs do not align with leaders of big tech companies. Well, exactly. I mean, this is a a wonderful case of Twitter hiding behind the First Amendment, even as I would say it itself abuses it. I mean, you know, it seems to me a very bizarre defense to use. That's why I said I can't imagine that the court system will ultimately allow it, because for me, there's never been any doubt about where the threat of the First Amendment comes from. I would say one thing that I think it is a mistake by Twitter to bring up the First Amendment because it is the First Amendment that ultimately um, they are violating, at least in spirit. And if they bring up the First Amendment, then it's entirely possible that at some point in the legal process, some judge or some court will say, well, if you live by the First Amendment, then you must fall by the First Amendment. So if you are not operating the First Amendment properly and you accept the First Amendment's importance, then that must mean that we're going to find against you and you have, in effect, brought up the very issue that condemns you. So I I, I think that I would have thought that Twitter bringing up the First Amendment in that way is not only rich, is foolish as well. <laughs> Bringing up the fact that uh, AG Paxton is harassing them, or Texas is Texas well, is harassing Twitter. Wow. Well, well, well wow. exactly. I mean, I'm in a wow. giant giant company being harassed by <laughs> Attorney General, who seems to me to be carrying out no more than an investigation. I mean, I mean that seems to me a crazy uh, a crazy position to take. And again, a court a court in the United States, the kind of courts the United States has, or at least used to have, I would have thought would throw that whole argument out instantly. But we've seen such strange things happen that I can't be sure. I mean, you know, remember Judge Sullivan, who's retired, by the way, uh, uh, who made life impossible for so long for Michael Flynn. So, you know, I, I can't guarantee that Twitter is going to lose this case. All I would say is that as far as I can see, it absolutely should do. <laughs> yeah, well, Twitter coming out with a statement like that. So that's the bully, the bully complaining that they're getting bullied. But <laughs> anyway, it's 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 absolutely. incredible. The, the these people, these people, they, they never cease to, to to amaze and and, and shock me. Um, mm-hmm. Going yeah. on that, uh, fo- following that uh, that note, Alexander, we have uh, this this news from Russia, which is looking to clamp down on Twitter. We'll talk about this very very quickly. And Russia is saying that they are going to be slowing down Twitter's access inside of Russia, and they may ultimately block and ban Twitter altogether because Twitter is infested, infested, infected with uh, child uh, porn, with with uh, suicide. Uh, Tweets encouraging suicide with uh, encouraging drug use, all all kinds of nasty stuff. And to be quite honest, Russia is 100 percent correct. Their communications regulator, Raskomnazdor, issued this statement where it says that Twitter, if Twitter does not remove content that incites minors to commit suicide, contains child pornography or information about the use of drugs, then uh, it will be completely blocked out of the country. They've uh, Roskomnadzor also has sent 28,000 requests to Twitter. They've documented it for them to remove posts and links and publications containing all of this filth. And uh, it looks like Twitter has not um, followed through on those requests from the no. Russian uh, communications regulator. Yeah, I, I'm sure you're right. I'm sure there is a lot of that material on Twitter, but we mustn't be, uh, uh, you know, uh, we must be realistic. I mean, the Russians aren't just doing that because there's all that terrible stuff there. The, the no doubt is they're also doing it for political reasons. They saw what happened in the United States over the last few months. They've seen the way Twitter has been used in various places around the world to, uh, um, you know, organize political protests and they're taking action and they said they would take action and that's what they're doing i predict 
that Twitter is not going to find itself in Russia, uh, is not going to continue in Russia for very much longer. The Russians, of course, have their own internet infrastructure, their, uh, their own social media infrastructure. And I think they've also taken steps to, tra to create a sort of independent runet, Russian internet if they have to. And I think that's what we're moving towards. And if we do, what a loss that will be for the United States, because, of course, the World Wide Web outside China was essentially the American Internet. The American Internet it started in the United States. It expanded all over the world. We all used American platforms. We all used American social media. We all used American operating systems. And now, because of the way um, the tech companies and certain political forces in the United States have tried to use that, we see that countries like Russia, which have the means to do it, are taking increasing steps to uh, uh, separate themselves from all of that. And it will be the end of the World Wide Web. I mean, that is now, it seems to me, baked in the cake. This Russian decision is just one more step in that direction. So, yes, it's a, 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 a fascinating uh, um, development. It's an important development. And thank you, Jack Dorsey, for achieving it, because ultimately your uh, actions uh, have played a big role in um, facilitating this event. Yeah. Uh, best case scenario for Twitter is that their site is going to be so slow in Russia, which I think now is a given. It's going to be so throttled down. It's going to be so slow that, you know, whatever users were uh, accessing Twitter in Russia, it's just going to become such a pain in the in the in, in the butt to use it that they're just going to say forget about it yeah. uh <laughs> you know well, that's right. worst that's, case scenario that's... worst case scenario for twitter in russia is that it's going to be blocked and if there's anybody that thinks russia won't block a big tech company they uh they blocked linkedin so they, yeah, they will if they want to block it they will block it uh, absolutely absolutely that's entirely correct though i think at the moment they're they're moving towards just choking twitter off by slowing it down as much as possible, which they, which was what will happen. But you know, they're absolutely capable of blocking it. They're talking about doing it. We are now steadily moving in that direction. And what is fascinating, by the way, is that whereas, say, ten years ago, if the Russian government had suggested any such thing, there would have been strong opposition within Russia. One gets the sense that there is now overwhelming acquiescence. So there we are. I mean, that's that's what the politicization of these platforms has achieved. Oh, not only that, there's going to be people that are cheering on Russia in the United States Absolutely. and in Europe and in Australia and all over the Indeed. world. They're going to actually cheer on Indeed. Russia's decision. That's that's the that's Absolutely. the game changer there. Absolutely. I mean, it's Absolutely. what can you say? I mean, Ger Ger Germany is already talking about there are voices we called in Germany. It. We called it, which are already talking like that. Exactly. We called exactly. It. Exactly. We said exactly. it was going to go down this route. Yes. And it's, it's yeah, going to go down this route. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Can I just say? I mean, you know, we should be. We should be. We should be sorry. I mean, I am not. We're not obviously globalists I'm, in I'm any conceivable sorry. way. I'm not well, sorry. The, not at all. But, but well, I mean, the World Wide <laughs> Web in itself you know, did embody something, you know, people talking to each other. But now, as I said, it seems to me that's going to be very, very rapidly gone. And we're not going to have the World Wide Web anymore. We're going to have uh, internets, regional inter internets covering particular regions. Some places you will still be able to access Twitter, for example, but it will be very, very slow. Like uh, I remember when I was in China in 2017, I, I, you, you could still, in theory, access Google there, but it was so slow that it was just impossible. So I mean, it, nobody, nobody would want to do it because um, it, 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 had, it was so slow. It was just too tedious to do. And that's yeah, social media. Well, so, social media will get will, will get siloed off for sure. Uh, other things we'll yeah, see, yeah. but definitely social media will get siloed off. I don't know if that's a bad thing at this point in time anymore. Um, well, I, you know, I, 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 I agree. I just I don't know that it's a bad thing either. All I am saying is we've moved from a position 
you know, 20 years ago, when it did look as if we would have a World Wide Web, to one where that is disappearing fast. And, you know, in five years, it'll be gone. That's my opinion. They did it to themselves. They did, they it, did it, it to themselves. themselves. Yeah. And, and the result is the soft power of the United States, which came with the internet, which, as I said, was the American internet adopted internationally, that soft power has severely weakened, will be severely weakened in consequence. They did it to themselves, though. That's why That's why a lot of people are going to be cheering this on, e even though it's going to probably mean that in a year or two, social media will be, will be fenced off. But <laughs> it, oh, the big tech companies didn't leave any other solution going forward for, no. for countries. No, no, they, they de-platformed de de the president of the United States. Was there yes. not one executive in all of Twitter and all of Facebook and all of YouTube, but it started with Twitter, was there not one grown up or one adult in the room, one venture capitalist, one, one investor, one board member with even 5% of common sense to say, hold on everybody, don't do this. There's only two more weeks of him being in office. Don't do this. Was there exactly. not one adult in all of Silicon Valley, all of Silicon Valley, 30 kilometers, th all 30 square kilometers, whatever it is, not one adult to pull them back from what they did? Indeed, indeed. And not one lawyer also, by the way. because Anyone, I mean, anyone. Old, anyone, exactly. Well, who knows? Maybe there were and maybe they were overruled. But it was a, whoever, whoever made that decision. It was an incredibly bad decision. And decisions like that always are repented at leisure. And this one will be. Yeah. All right. Well, uh, Alexander, we'll leave it there. But it is called the blockchain, guys. And I think that is the way forward. And it will probably be the way forward, not only in uh, decentralized finance, but probably in some sort of decentralized social social yes. media. We'll see how that space uh, yes. develops. Yes. So guys, yes. uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, EMC2, Hex, we got some new coins in there. Your help is very much appreciated. PayPal, Patreon, subscribe, star um, as well. And uh, go to the Duran shop, pick up some merchandise. Our merchandise is, uh, does get delivered across all borders, all over the world, actually. So uh, pick up some merchandise from the Duran shop as well. And uh, talk about um, Blockchain types of platforms. Check us out on Rumble, on BitChute, and on Odyssey. BitChute uses peer-to-peer -peer technology, which is interesting for delivering their videos. And Odyssey is on the blockchain. I believe that they have everything on the blockchain, actually. So in essence, they are pretty much uh, sensor-proof in a way. And it's yes. a great platform. Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And look up our shop. Check your subscription to this channel and to our various other channels. And we look forward very, very much to you joining us in our next program. All right. Take care, everybody.